You see, Apple Pay starts with the premise that your credit card information and, and purchases are personal to you, and they should stay that way. When you add a card to Apple Pay, your actual credit card numbers are never stored in your device or on our servers. Instead, for every payment, we create a unique one-time code that is only good for that one transaction from your device. Your purchases are private, and we don't store the details of those transactions. They remain between you, the merchant, and your bank. We don't know your credit card number, or what you bought, or how much you paid. And we don't want to. Just three months after we launched, over 2,000 banks have signed on to bring Apple Pay to millions of their customers. And today, we're excited to announce that beginning in September, Apple Pay will be available for many transactions with the federal government. Like, for example, when you pay for admission to your favorite national park. We're also working to make sure credit and procurement cards issued to government employees for their expenses can be used with Apple Pay. And we're working on initiatives with leading banks and networks to use this technology with benefit programs like Social Security and veterans' pensions that serve citizens at both the state and federal level. We can imagine a day in the not-so-distant future when your wallet becomes a remnant of the past, your passport, your driver's license, and other important documents can be digitally stored in a way that's safe, secure, and easy to access, but only by you. After all, we shouldn't have to trade our security for the convenience of having all of this information at our fingertips. When a system is designed properly, security and convenience can actually work in harmony. This is a world of greater privacy and a world where criminals find it much more difficult to carry out their crimes. Without a doubt, safeguarding a world of digitized personal information is an enormous task, and no single company or organization can accomplish it on its own. That is why we're committed to engaging productively with the White House and the Congress and putting the results of these conversations into action. Because when it comes to the rights of customers and the rights of citizens, it's important to realize we're all talking about the same people. People have entrusted us with their most personal and precious information. We owe them nothing less than the best protection that we can possibly provide. By harnessing the technology at our disposal and working together as businesses, governments, and citizens, we believe we can bring about a future that fully embraces both privacy and security. We must get this right. History has shown us that sacrificing our right to privacy can have dire consequences. We still live in a world where all people are not treated equally. Too many people do not feel free to practice their religion or express their opinion or love who they choose. A world in which that information can make the difference between life and death. 